the comparison of structure variable it's a very important topic that you need to understand if i have the structure inside the structure that is what i will call it as a structure within a structure allowance is the variable of the structure amount that's what you need to understand at this point of time the first location that is in the index number one so this belongs to the next student hello everyone i welcome all of you to the yet another interesting sessions it's all about structure in my previous session i have discussed a lot of important basic concepts with respect to the structures hope you have seen that session before you watch this so guys what is that i have done in my last session let's have a quick recap so in my last session i have discussed what exactly the structure is all about with the definitions so we have discussed the definition for the structure followed by how do i write the structure and what is the syntax to create the structure is what i have discussed in my previous session so fine so let's understand what is that i have in this session so i will be showing that to all of you in the agenda so in the agenda i will be showing i will be discussing the comparison of structure variable it's a very important topic that you need to understand if you know the structures so fine after that i will be discussing structure within the structure so how do i have the structure within the structure is what i will be discussing with all of you in this session along with that array within the structure this is the three important topics if you know the structure so you should say that i know these three topics so let's understand this in depth so guys comparing the structure variable so let's take an example before uh, we get into this topic so let's understand it in a different way let me change the color all right so fine guys uh, i have the variable let me just take a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 20 so i have taken two variables yes and i have assigned the value to each variable that is 10 and 20 respectively for a and b so fine how do I compare it? Say for example, A is equal to is equal to B. So can I compare it like this? Yes, you can compare it like this. Say it is true. Is it? No, it is false. So fine. In the same way, I will take it like, you know, A is not equal to B. So is it true? Yes, it is true. So fine. So I know how to compare this. This is the variable that I've taken. Now let's take the structure variable. So say for example, I'm creating a structure variable for employee okay so emp1 is the name of the structure so for this i will be creating the structure variable e1 comma e2 so that's what you need to remember so e1 and e2 are the variables of structure so when i have the variables of structure can i compare it directly so e1 is equal to is equal to e2 so is this statement valid no it is not valid this is not supporting statement or this is not a valid statement in C programming language with respect to the structure comparison. So then how do I do it? So you have to do it like this. So student three dot number is equal to is equal to student two dot number is a valid statement if I'm comparing the structure. So you need to understand student three is one of the structure that I have. So student dot number. So that's what you need to understand. So fine again here student two is one of the structure. So this is one of the valid statement for a comparison of two different variables of two different structures. So fine, this is how we compare the structure. So fine, moving forward to the next topic. So guys, structure within a structure. What exactly the structure within a structure? If I have the structure inside the structure, that is what I will call it as a structure within a structure. Let's take up an example and understand this concept in a better way. So guys, here is an example for all of you. So fine, let's understand this. So please observe the keyword that I have here as a struct. So followed by I have the name of the structure that is salary. So fine, so you all understood that I have created a structure called salary. So inside that I will have the different data types. All right, the variable which belongs to the different data types is what I have. Along with that, so you please observe one more thing. I have one more keyword that is struct. All right, so I will name it as salary and this is as amount. So let me just uh, uh, assume and I've given the name that is amount. Let me assume and I have given the name as amount here. So that's what you need to understand. So what is that you need to understand? Basically, 
I have the structure. Inside the structure, I have one more structure. Structure inside the structure is what I will call it as a nested structure is what you need to understand. So fine. What is this allowance and what is this employee? So please understand. So employee is the object or the variable of this salary. Employee is the variable of the salary structure and the allowance is a variable of the structure amount. That's what you need to understand at this point of time. Say for example, how do I access name sir, whatever I have here. So it's very simple. So you just have to use employee, all right? So you just have to use employee. Employee is the variable of type salary, right? So employee dot, so you will just give name. So this is how you will be accessing the variable, right? So fine, if you want to store anything, so within double quotes, you will be giving it. So, but sir, I have a question. I know this, we have learned this, but how do I access this, say for example, city? How do I access this city? So that's what you need to check here. So I should I should consider all this as a character array. So I've just taken an example, that's it. So if I want to take, so if I want to store anything, I have to store it in a character array. That's what you need to remember. So don't worry about the example that I've taken here. Say for example, let me take house rent. How do I access this house rent? So first of all, you have to use employee. So fine, let me take the employee. All right, so employee dot. So what is the next thing that I have? Next thing is allowances. All right, so that's what you, ne you need to write. So I'll just write allowances dot and then I have to write the house rent. So that's what you need to write. House rent is equal to whatever the value that you want to give. So you can give it. This is how I will be having the nested structure, structure inside the structure. And this is how you will be accessing the variables that you have in the nested structure. So that's what you need to remember with respect to the nested structure. Fine. Moving forward to the next one that we have. So this is what uh, the concept that we have discussed in the previous slide. So how do we access the data that we have in the nested structure? So I think we have uh, discussed this already. So guys, this is one of the important uh, information that you should understand and info important content that you should understand. So what exactly is this? Uh, structures and arrays. You all know that, okay, let me just take a structure example, say for example, struct, okay, I have the structure name as student. So fine, here I will be writing character array, all right, so name, okay, of 10 and then int age, all right, so int phone number, Let's, let me assume like this, all right, so I will end this by creating this. This is what you need to understand. So I have the structure, the name of the structure here is student. So how many variables I have inside that? I have three variables, all right? So I have three variables. So please understand. So how do I store the value for this? I have to write yes one dot. I have to write yes one dot name. Yes one dot name is equal to Ravi. Yes one dot name is equal to Ravi, so this is what you need to understand. So fine, listen to me carefully. Yes, one dot. What is the second one that I have? Age. Let me just write it as 18. So you're not writing the quotes because it is an integer. You don't have to write it. So you all know that. So yes, one dot. Okay, I have a phone number. So let me just uh, write the phone number, something like that. Okay, so fine, you have written that. Imagine I have uh, 1,000 students. Is it possible for me to uh, write the 1,000 variables? Yes, sir, you can write it. But is it possible for me to remember all the thousand variable names? It's little complicated and it's little different and it is very difficult when compared to this. How do we solve this? So to solve this kind of problem, so we have the concept called structure array. How do we implement the concept of arrays with respect to the structure? So my dear students, I have the diagram with me. So please observe what is that I have in the diagram. So what is that I have? I have the array, okay? Array name, what I'm taking it as W. Array name, what I'm taking as W. What is this W? So please understand. Say for example, I have the structure. Let me rewrite the structure again. So I have the structure called student, okay? I have the structure called student and then followed by I have int age, okay? And then character array, that is name, all right? So that's what I have imagined like that. And then I have int phone number, 
All right, so this is what I have. So here I had written yes one. So instead of writing yes one, I will create an array. Okay, I will create a array. Suppose if I write like this square bracket, square parenthesis, square brackets. So what is this? What is the meaning of this? You are creating an array and the array name is yes one. Array name is yes one. That's what you need to understand. So fine, what is that we need to understand here, sir? You need to understand it very clearly. Listen to me now. So what is this? This is an array that I have. Imagine this is an array. So here, the name of the array that I have taken instead of S1, I have taken it as W. Yes, instead of S1, I have taken it as W. So imagine if I take W of 0, okay? So that is that belongs to the first student. W of 0 belongs to the first student. In the same way, W of 1 belongs to the second student. W of 2 belongs to the third student and it goes on. So please observe here. The first location in the 0th index, whatever I have in the W array. So this belongs to the first student. In the same way, the first location that is in the index number 1. So this belongs to the next student. So index number two belongs to the third student. Index number three belongs to the third student. Is it? Fourth student. Index number five, four, six, seven, eight, nine. It goes on. Okay, that is what you need to understand. But remember, I have only one name. That is W. This was the problem that I was facing in my previous concept. I had to name. I had to have thousand names if I have thousand students. My dear students, you need to understand. I have only one name with the help of the index I am able to store the different student information in a different different locations with the help of the different index that's what you need to understand so how are we storing the data here sir imagine as I told you I have name age gender okay name age gender and wage so this is the four things that I have here I have instead of age name phone number so how many fields that I have? I have name, age, gender and wage. So all the four informations, I will be storing it here of first student. In the same way, all the four information of the second student, I will be storing it here. All the informations of third student, I'll be storing it here. So that is what the advantage that we will have if we implement the structure array. So that's what you need to understand with respect to the structure array is what I would like to tell you at this point of time. So guys, so please understand array within the structure is one of the important concepts that we need to remember. So by saying this, I've come to an end of this session. Thank you, everybody.